My name is Dave McFatridge. Third year here, man. The first two years have flown by, and they've been good years relative to, to the history of the program. I got here, uh, I got here two years ago, and uh, believe it or not, we were ranked 258. There are 334 Division I women's volleyball programs, and we actually cracked the top 100 for a, a short stint in my first year. We had 17 wins, more, most wins in, uh, in the past 10 years. Uh, and so we feel like we're on the right track. We're about at 500, which relative to history is the best two years that the program has ever had except for one previous two-year stint. Uh, we um, got our work cut out for us this year, though. We have 10 new faces, and thankfully I've got two great leaders in these two. Peyton Harris is a senior, and Yelena Vuchin is a senior. But, uh, man, they're doing a great job, i got to tell you. Ten new faces, uh, seven freshmen. Uh, and so 10 of our 13 players are new. And I got to tell you, when we headed into preseason, it was, uh, you know, that's a, that's a question mark. Not just the things we have to learn on the court, not just the offensive systems of play, not just the defensive systems of play, but how is this group going to get along and what can I do as a head coach to make sure that the team dynamic is really happening. And so, uh, but I got to tell you, we had a, an abbreviated preseason this year. Now, I feel, it feels like our preseason is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. But we did ask them to come in two or three times a day. And we made sure that we were balancing our, um, our effort with technique and tactics so we didn't wear them out. But I, I got to tell you, the team dynamic uh, this year with this group is as good as it's been since I've been here. Uh, actually, it's better, it's better since, uh, since I've been here. And it's important, you know, it's important. The older I get, the more I realize the, the ingredients that it takes to, to win. And one of those is, um, is a great team dynamic. And so uh, even though we've got 10 out of 13 new faces, I think the team dynamic is really, really good going into the season. We're going to be a process-oriented uh, team this year and see if we can't get better week to week. Can you, uh, speaking of ingredients to win, um, can you speak a little bit about your two seniors and, and, and how important of an ingredient they will be to the, the, the paella or whatever yeah, you want to mix? Yeah, absolutely. Be glad to talk about that. You know, we feel like we've got a lot of work to do in the state of Mississippi to, uh, to educate everybody and to bring Mississippi up with what the rest of the country and the world is seeing in the sport. And um, we're doing everything we can outside of, of um, our program to, to help Mississippi volleyball. Uh, one of the most important ingredients to, a, to having a successful team is ball control, first ball contact. If we are uh, in serve receive, we want to make sure that we control the ball so that our setter can run the offense. And not just run the offense, but have multiple options. And so that's the biggest part that Peyton brings to our team. Uh, not only is she a great digger, you know, if we are serving and then they're attacking, we, we not only have to, to pass to target when we're in serve-receive, we have to dig to target when, when, uh, when we're serving and transitioning. And so if once that happens, once we pass to target, once we serve-receive great, once we dig to target, then we have to have a big bomber to put the ball away. And to be quite honest with you guys heading into the preseason this year, we knew that we were lacking some arms. Uh, we have recruited uh, so that starting next year we have a lot of arms coming in. But this year our biggest and best arm is this young lady right here. <laughs> and I call her the Serbian beast for a reason and she can go off against the best teams in our conference, which means the best teams in the country. Uh, you know, I remember the two matches we played against Kentucky last year. She lit them up, and she hit 374, 375, something like that in both matches. Again, to educate you guys, it's like a batting average. So you know somebody's hitting 374, they're doing their job. So the ingredients that these two bring are right here, ball control. By the way, she's also, uh, these are two of our best servers on the team. So that first ball contact is important to us. Serve, pass, dig and uh, they both do a great job. So ball control here, put the ball away there. Can you talk about your journey from Serbia to Seattle? It's awful, but 
it can get a little in the head there, but uh, just talk about your uh, journey and, and, and uh, adjusting it to Mississippi State and this area. Well, I come from a, a small city. It's called Betre. It's in North Serbia. And um, I was playing handball for a very long time. And the coach left, so as a group, we all went to you know play volleyball. And the coach at the time, he told me that I'm going to be tall and I should do something about it. So I went to Subotica, which is the northest city in Serbia, and I started playing professionally um, my high school years. And um, I realized that as a professional, um, just not volleyball player, but as a professional athlete, you don't um, have much time or much chance to work on your education. And I learned about American uh, college system and I really really liked it that I have um, chance to improve as a person and uh, educate myself and play uh, a sport that I enjoy playing so I contacted uh, one of the coaches at Seattle and um, they recruited me there uh, I played there for two years and um, uh, that uh, Seattle University is kind of right in the middle of Seattle, Metropola, and I didn't feel like I fit there really well, and um, I um, just uh, didn't enjoy as much, and um, I uh, took a chance to transfer. I heard about, well, I that Monday that I got my transfer, um, paper or how they call it for release, release. release. Um, that Monday got like 300 emails and it was overwhelming <laughs> um, I was trying to you know reply to every single one but uh, I had such a great feeling about just the logo of Mississippi State when they sent me an email and it was amazing um, where a coach would call me, you know, every other day and, you know, make sure I'm fine, make sure I'm, I'm holding in there. It was, it was stressful time. Um, and I came here to visit and I realized uh, it's, it's very similar to where I come from. Uh, it's a small city, but it feels like family. It feels like everyone is part of a unity. And that what gave me goosebumps when I came here. It was just like everyone is wearing the same gear. Everyone is rooting Hell State, and it just felt great. And I felt like I'm finally going to be a part of something great, something big, that's gonna you know help me in my future. And just I'm I'm going to have so much fun. And I I wanted to say yes the first time I landed, but you know I didn't want to. Um, do it too fast and so I waited a day uh, after I came back um, to Seattle I was uh, transferring at that time so I was still living there and I called him right away that that morning I was <laughs> like yes yes please <laughs> so yeah that's that's about it here I am thinking I'm calling her all the time I'm sweet talking to her. hey come play here and it was the logo <laughs> the logo is what got you here, but uh, you know one of the cool things about about well, I call her Vucci. Every every player has a nickname on my team. This is Pedro, by the way. Um, the cool thing about Vucci: last year, her first year here, she fell in love with the place, and she said this. I'll never forget it. She goes, "I played for this school and these colors, and for somebody to go from Serbia to Seattle to Starkville, Stark Vegas, and play volleyball here and to feel that." family enough to say something like that in her first year for me that's that's pretty profound so. another cool thing she graduates this year and she goes hey coach uh can i hang out with you guys another year and i'm like absolutely so uh so looking forward to another year which we she'd be on the court but another year with her and our her involved in our program somehow so coach you mentioned all of having a lot of new faces uh, of those new faces, who's kind of stood out the most so far 
coming into the season? Uh, great question. You know, they each bring something different. And like I told you, the camaraderie is incredible. So they're each bringing something. Uh, as far as on the, on the court, uh, tactically, technically, and results-wise, I would say that uh, we have a middle blocker. Her name is Laura Rose Gray. And um, Laura Rose Gray is a 6'3 middle blocker from East Texas. Uh, a great young lady. Every, every, I'm blessed to coach this team this year. Every, every kid on this team is fantastic. Uh, Laura Rose Gray is an East Texas kid. And uh, um, we actually, uh, one of my uh, former assistants had looked at her and uh, wasn't, wasn't kind of feeling what I was seeing. And then when I saw her again, I'm like, hey, let's circle back. And so thankful, thankfully she was still available. And she um, committed to us. She's doing a real good job in the middle. When she gets a hold of it, she, um, she can bring the thunder, man. I can tell you that. So she's doing really, really well in front of the setter. Uh, she's going to be what we are going to call our middle hitter number one. And so we're planning on running a 5-1 offense. And that means for two rotations, she's going to have to get better at running behind the setter. And she's working hard on that right now. But uh, uh, she's doing a good job for us. Uh, when she's uh, in the right place defensively, puts up a good block, she's so strong, it's, it's, uh, you're not going to blow her hands off the block. She's going to be good. So she's done a great job for us. We have, um, we have a transfer setter named Morgan Calf. And she's doing a great job for us. She's from Stony Brook. She has two years left. She stepped in. She's very even keeled, which is what you really want a lot of times in a setter. You know, the team's going up and down sometimes, and she's a steadying influence. She's setting a good ball. She's trying, we're, we try to run a cumulative offense here, and she's kind of learning the ins and outs of that. We have a meeting at 2 o'clock today to kind of uh, figure some things out with that, but she's done a great job, uh, a really, really good job. We have a, um, a freshman a libero, DS libero, that's a ball contro controller like Pedro here, and her name is Gabby Zagunda. Uh, it's kind of a neat story because she comes from a volleyball powerhouse called Muncieana in Muncie, Indiana, and um, and a little little town that is an incredible club. So Gabby Zagunda is uh, her team won the. Um, 18 Open AU National Championships this past year, and she's a very, very good ball controller. So uh, they're all bringing something to the table, but those three freshmen stand out to me. We have another freshman, Sarah Maddox. She came early. She came in January last year, and she has switched positions, and just a gracious young lady. And um, I said, hey, we're going to need you over here for one year. And she said, I'll go. I'll do it, Coach, whatever you need me to do. So those four, Sarah Maddox, uh, Gabby Zagunda, Morgan Kath and um, and um, Laura, Rose. Laura Rose Gray are the are the four that are really bringing it day in and day out on the court. Pat, you said uh, the same thing I was thinking. It, it happened fast in year in year three already. I know. Um, I, I know volleyball obviously it, you're recruiting so many years out. It yes. takes time, but like you said the first two years you're always setting records. Are you starting to sort of see the shape of you know your vision and the program? Yes. Yes. That's a that's a great question, Bob. I'll be, I'll be totally candid with you, man. I feel like it's taken me two years to get to year one. That's what I feel like. I feel like it's taken two years to get to year one. We have a new staff. We have 10 new players. Um, um, this one's going into her third year with me, and she's the only, year, only player on the team that's going into her third year with me, except Kristen Carr. And so it's... Um, we know we've got a plan. We know where we were. We know where we're going. We know the kind of players we're recruiting, and we finally have caught up on, on or caught up on recruit, recruiting. Uh, we have one available for 2018 and one available for 2019. We just got another setter commit the other day, and so uh, for 2019. So um, uh, yeah, it feels like it feels like I've got uh, more traction. Uh, a better sense of direction for the team, what the team needs, what we need in this conference, and and you know we we've got big aspirations. We really do, and uh, we want to do things that have never been done here before. And I really feel like we've got uh, players coming in that are going to help us do that. Peyton, what's it like for you as a player to kind of 
having a sale with so many new players? I guess for the most part, it's just making sure it's an easy transition for them um, and us because it's kind of having to learn everyone new again. Usually it's maybe two or three freshmen coming in. Um, that's about normal. Uh, so it's just getting them acquainted with the program. Now it's getting 10 new girls acquainted with the way things work in the weight room, the way things work um, in the gym, the way things work outside of the gym. And so it's a little bit more of a challenge, I guess. But I mean, like Fash says, these girls are great. They meld into everything so quickly. They learn so quickly. Um, they're, adjust they're adjusting very quickly. So, I mean, it feels like we've been together for months when it's only been a few weeks now. So we got really lucky with the kind of girls that we got. Yelena, can, can you remember how tall you were when you played handball? Um, I would say like maybe five, seven, five, eight. Uh, and then I just, one summer I grew yeah. <laughs> two feet. <laughs> but, yeah. And was that when the coach said that, or I would assume the coach said before that growth spurt that you're going you're gonna to be tall? Or? Yes, yes. Um, because my kind of pro body proportion is that my legs are double as my <laughs> upper body. So he's like, you've got long legs, I think you're going to grow. And my parents are tall. Uh, my mom played uh, basketball professionally at the time where Yugoslavia was, and my dad, um, he played uh, water polo. So I'm from athletic family. Is that, in, in your country, is that how athletics are formed in, in the sense that in, in the United States it's usually amateur at the high school level, but in, in Serbia, the, or does that how is that how it works in that you go to a, a professional track for, for the the higher or the more elite athletes or yeah well I was kind of lucky to um, be a part of a professional um, top level volleyball in Serbia uh, and I played with a lot of girls that played on the national team junior and senior so um, but yeah it's it's basically you know middle school you're still you know living with parents and if if you're lucky enough or if you work hard enough because talent is five percent um you you get a chance to um work basically work uh for a club that's on a professional level um so um i moved away from my parents when i was 13 in order to play volleyball in Spartak, which is a club. And did you, did you remember if you had faith and, you, and did you believe that this was a track that was going to take me to, you know, not necessarily where you are today, but, you know, you, you've had significant accomplishments in your athletic career. Did, did you imagine that, hey, am I going to be any good as a volleyball player? Well, the only thing I knew was I'm going to work hard um, and I, I can control my future, not so much, um, but I, I was just being on a court twice a day uh, my four years in high school, and um, I, no, I had no idea I'm, I was going to end up in America. <laughs> that is still amazing to me, um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. On that just note, I was going to say, you just, you just moved to America like three years ago, I guess. Yes. Your English is fantastic. Uh, how did, like, did you grow up speaking it? I don't know how you got so good at it. No, um, I did. So we do have English classes in our, um, in our Serbian education system, but it's, it's very, <coughs> excuse me, low level. Apple book, you know, <laughs> type of a thing. Uh, but I, I was, you know, listening a lot to a lot of um, English songs and um, watching a lot of TV. Um, and I was going um, to this, like, private uh, English lessons um, my last year years in middle school. So I was 12 and 13, and I started learning English more because I really liked it. I really like languages. Right now, I'm taking Italian, so 
Um, yeah, and I understand Hungarian a little bit. Um, so. Just to clarify, the professional part that she's talking to is not what we understand as being professional. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Coach, you mentioned that when, when she was going to transfer from Seattle, um, she had 300 emails. <laughs> I, I can't imagine how the word gets out of her ears. Well, <laughs> yeah. how that gets out that quickly. But how, how do you, well, how did you find out that, that she was going to transfer and what, what sparked the interest in, in saying, hey, do you want to come to the Spark? I, I got an email from a Serbian contact. Uh, I thought I was one of the few that got the email. Obviously, I wasn't. So, and then I just kind of jumped on it from there. And I had been in touch with these guys off and on for several years, and had never gotten a player from them. And so I was going back and forth, back and forth with them. And then one of the, uh, I think one of the assistant coaches at Seattle was the Serbian guy, right? Yes. And uh, I was communicating with him as well. And so uh, I think he cared for her, and he wanted what was best for her and he understood the situation and and so um, yeah we got her out here on a visit as quickly as we could there's some big schools looking at her we're very very grateful that uh, she decided to come here we're very grateful that I recruited her at Central Arkansas she came for a visit there left there came here for a visit and called me up and said coach I'm going to Mississippi State so uh, grateful for both of them but um, you know when when Bougie was on her trip um, of course you know we Baseball's in season, we take our recruits there. And I'll never forget this, man. She was sitting up in the upper, just to the left of home plate, up to the upper part next to uh, Chelsea Deuce, who was hosting her that weekend. And I was in the, down the right field uh, line. And um, a foul ball, she's just ch chatting with Chelsea Deuce, and a foul ball was hit and it went right past her head like that. And I'm like, thank you, man. You, just that far from her head. so. That was a kind of a scary thing for me, but I don't even think she noticed it because she's too busy talking to her, her host. So it worked out good for us. I've got two questions. How many languages can you speak or do you understand? Well, I can speak fluently Serbian and English, um, but I do understand Hungarian a little bit. I can read it, but cannot really create sentences because I wasn't thought that way. Um, and right now, I'm, I'm just taking Italian Basically, classes. All right, my next question is a personal question. What have you learned from her, and not about the game of volleyball, just personally, and what have you learned from her since y'all have gotten to know each other? Just you something go. personal that's really <laughs> impressed you. I guess Yelena's just so down to earth. She's just so genuine. Um, I know that it was, it's probably hard coming here from a different country, um, especially when you don't know anyone, um, and just the way that she really tried to become, like was really genuine with us, really wanted to be a good friend to all of us, and I mean was there. And there's a couple of times I'd call Yelena and I'd be having a really tough time, and Yelly's just always there for us when we need her, and she's just, I don't know, she's one of the sweetest persons I've ever met. <laughs> she's, and she loves cats. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone needs a cat, she has like eight. Yes. Okay, so guys, I have four Eight, girls yeah. and two boys. Let me know. Hey, I've got $11 for a cat. But so she's you, a person. Cool. Sorry, she's just an amazing person. She really is. What if, and it doesn't have to be about the person, but maybe the culture, anything. What have you learned from her? Well, I learned that Texas is a different country. <laughs> <laughs> I learned sweet tea is very important down south. Yeah. Um, um, what else? I, well, I learned so much. You learned that gray occasionally is a nice hair color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just um, know. but I think Peyton is kind of representing the, the culture here down south, um, and the mentality. And it's, it's kind of like, take care of those around you and live and let live type of a thing. And um, she, she's a very caring person as well. I mean, every, I think just like recruiting wise, coach would not let, you know, girl come in here and just do whatever. It's, he's really looking for someone who, who's gonna fit. Um, this team and this mentality and caring for each other because it is so important and I think 
Peyton has a huge family and she cares so much for them and I learned that family is so, so important um, um, here, well, down south, that's how I call it, um, as well as fate. Yes. It doesn't have to be a family, like just my family, it's like these girls are my family here, like um, they're all my sisters, I mean if they ever need anything they know I'm here, so. Last question. Coach, you mentioned uh, Chris. Uh, mm -hmm. I asked about the Starkville girl. What is her role on the team this year, being a leader, being around, as you said, for this is the third year? Great question, man. Uh, most improved player I've ever had. Ever. And 25 plus years in the game as a player and a coach, that's saying something. Uh, I, will n I will never forget the day I met her. It was uh, January 12th, uh, whatever, 2015, the day of the press conference. After the press conference, this girl walks up to me, little girl, and she looks, she looks up at me. I look down at her, and she goes, hi, coach. I'm, I'm Christian Carr. And I said, hey, little girl, how you doing? <laughs> I didn't know, man. She goes, I'm doing fine. I'm playing for you this year. I said, you are. <laughs> so that little girl has become a beast, man. And it's so cool for me to see because, you know, it's, you, to be a great volleyball player, it is almost impossible to not play in a good club program and, and be, and improve the, and, and become really, really good. So uh, I've seen her grow up as a person and as a player. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I think I made a mistake last year. I didn't play her, I didn't play her as much as I should have. And I told her that. Um, but she's a starting outside hitter for us this year. I'm expecting her to be fearless. I'm expecting her to reach high and bang and be aggressive. And I'm expecting her to do the things she's done in the last uh, 10 or 12 days of preseason. And she's done a great job.